started. Okay, so today's agenda, CBORBIS again, uh, status update and progress. Um, let me post the etherpad and also open it. I'm a bit slow today. Oh, that's very slow. <clears throat> yeah. Still loading. Testing my patience. Should we try the... Uh... What's so hard about either bit? Why is it so slow though? Does it work for you? No. Okay. Sure. Okay. Let's let's use this one maybe then. Uh, it seems to be loading. Does that even work? Sorry. Does that work? Well, I hope so. <laughs> Does it not? It doesn't seem to behave much different from the one before. <laughs> Me and I see, can see the gym is also connected. I'm not getting any content. You're not? Okay. Well, I guess okay. I'll take. It loaded no, for me. How about this? I have content now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Etherpad is really slow. Let's try to see. Can we use secondary? Um, how do you do this? Do you have to sign in? I'm getting packet loss on pings to that address. These are bad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's use the hack MD link. Use the edit. Yeah, that, that reminds of packet loss. That looks really bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to copy paste the agenda. This is from twentieth of February. No, twenty ninth of January. This one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's fine. Uh, I cannot copy paste the whole thing. Better. Better. Thank you. Okay. 
Catherine, you can tell us uh, what's the status. Yeah, the status is that I think I have uh, uh, broken the log the chain bill. on number 63. Um, so I have proposed some text. And the text essentially states facts. It's not really making any recommendation. It just talks about what's true. And uh, we probably need to discuss uh, whether that's enough or whether we actually need to uh, be more um, prescriptive here. Mm -hmm. So Laurent already sent a review. I'm not entirely sure that I can take a direction from this review because it says two things that, that don't really agree with each other. So you seem to say that uh, all decoders should always detect and reject duplicates. And then you say, do we want to really exclude decoders that don't do that? So at least what I was thinking is that or what I understood from that text is um, there's a difference between uh, um, in, in one behavior is is that as soon as you detect a duplicate, you you uh, error, you report the fact that you detected a duplicate and uh, refuse to refuse to go on. Yes, sir. so that's that is a. a we all agree that's good, reasonable behavior. Um, and uh, some generic decoders will do this and should do this and protocols shouldn't rely on this. And that that's, in some ways, it's an ideal case. Um, but another behavior is uh, when you detect a duplicate, you don't error, you just take first, take or take last or, or um, Take random or some other, you know, rule. Um, so there's no error. You're just still doing duplicate detection, but you're so you're just passing on the non-duplicates. Yeah, so. that, that's the interesting, uh, the, the the not so interesting case because if you are actually detecting a duplicate, you might as well act on that. I think uh, you are now talking about the implementations that do not detect duplicates, but just handle them uh, and handle them by losing the other entries with the same key. Yeah, so there's no duplicate detection going on. It, uh, all that happens is those other entries are lost. I, I would call that, I, I, I am calling that duplicate detection because you do have to detect that it's a duplicate. No, it's no. Just, Oh, I see. Okay. An, an implementation that that well no. does uh, search from the beginning and returns the first match. This is inefficient, but it not, might be appropriate for a constrained device. That would process a map with a duplicate entry by returning the first entry but would never detect that there are ones uh, behind it. And similarly, my, my implementations actually um, store entries into a map. And since the map doesn't tell me whether there, there previously was something in that entry, it just gets lost. 
There's no detection going on. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, let me let me say it this way. Um, the, the problem with any kind of things, any kind of implementation where you lose um, or don't don't pass on, you know, you try to implement uh, take first or take last, is that um, I don't think we can specify that uh, it should always be take first or always take last. Uh, right, right. We can't specify that. So it's some implementations are going to do it one way and others are going to do it another. Um, and if we if we say that you know one of these kinds of behaviors is okay, then um, how do protocol designers know what to rely on? I mean, will they rely on take first or take last? Um, that seems a, a really bad situation to um, put protocol designers in I mean, and implementers in. Um, right, that's why there is text that clarifies that you cannot do that. The, 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 the implement, okay. And okay. uh, there's uh, even text that tells you that uh, generic encoders that lose stuff um, are not applicable in all situations. So whether you can consider that okay or not okay uh, depends on whether you are in that situation or not. Yeah, okay. So all this probably can be sent clearer, uh, can be said clearer than um, the, the text currently is, uh, but I think the, the basic uh, summary of the discussion is um, pretty much what we discussed on the mailing list. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see, I see, I, I, I see, I understand the intent of your text now. That, that third option is the one where um, you don't know what the encoder is going to, or what the decoder is going to return. Sometimes it might re return, some decoders might do first, some might do last, might, some might do random, some might change. So you you can't, in that third option, you have no, um, uh, I mean, I, I suppose even in that third option, yeah, you, you, have, you, have, you have no way of relying on what the, knowing what the decoder is gonna do. I mean, there, there is a class of behavior of a decoder that is not covered by those three options that is very unlikely to occur, to occur but might occur which is that sometimes it passes duplicates on and sometimes it eliminates duplicates. That would really... be, be covered by the third option. Okay, it would, it would be? I think so, but I'm not sure I phrased this correctly, but that was the idea. Okay, okay. Let me check the phrasing. <clears throat> yeah, the third option said lose some entries with duplicate keys. It doesn't say that you have to lose everything to be in that third option. Yes, okay. But the EG. Well, that's an example. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but we have to make sure this is clear. So uh, 
you have any suggestion how to make this less easy to misunderstand, that would be useful. Okay. So I was thinking those decoders can only be used in situations where the protocol is not sensitive to duplicates. That would be the condition, not the not reliance on the encoder being correct or the encoded Zebor um, being uh, not tampered with. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure that that's actually true because uh, uh, the, there are many applications for, for Zebor that uh, happen within the security domain, and uh, uh, there you actually um, usually or often are in a position where you can rely on that. And uh, I wouldn't want to exclude those implementations um, just because they cannot be used on the open internet. So for, for my implementation, I actually plan to, to put in a non-strict flag, for which I need to find a name, uh, that says the existing behavior is okay, and if you don't set that, then you get full checking. And a performance set. Yeah. Hmm. So I think that the last sentence of the bullet list is quite explicit in pointing out that these that that decoders that don't check have a limited area of application. And I think that that's pretty much what what we uh, took out of the Singapore meeting. Well, there's, there's protocols that don't have an issue with duplicates. And then there's um, environments or situations where um, you, at least you think you can rely on, on uh, correct encoding. I, I don't know. I'm I'm actually so so I, I think the the protocol part might be missing, um, and the um, any any text about situations where the encoder can be relied on should be I, I would put a lot of big warnings on, on that because that's a it's a classic area where people get. Know, implementers make assumptions that are not true. Like, okay, it's behind the firewall. Okay, the firewall includes a company of 100,000 people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, therefore, it's okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't, that doesn't seem like an okay scenario to, you know, uh, to, tr to trust the encoder. So, I mean, I would, I mean, I guess the words I would pick would be things like um, good practice, uh, you know, 
would uh, assumes input is always hostile, but some uh, some scenarios in some scenarios you might consider uh, the input not to be hostile, but you should be really cautious about that. First in, I pasted some text in the chat window. I think we may want to have text along this lines included. Yeah, that, that's certainly something that, that needs to be explained. I think that's the only real problem I have with the text is it's not sufficient about telling you what what can go wrong. But my attempt with the sentence, these generic decoders can only be used and so on, was to be very specific uh, on what, what can be done and cannot be done. Well, I like your text, uh, so I'm, I'm pasting that in. Yeah, I think that that text is a good addition. Um, what about text that requests decoders to declare which of these three options that they have implemented? Yeah, that was kind of implicit, but we probably need to make this explicit.
if you're going to keep the thing about scenarios, I don't know about situations where the encoder can be relied on upon. Um, I think you should expand that to where the encoder um, and entire uh, transport infrastructure or it's not just the encoder here, it's the the man in the middle, you know. Okay. So I just replaced it by data source and transfer. Yeah, and e.g., uh, no men in the middle. The fun case, of course, is when the man in the middle is yourself. Because you load it up, you write it back out, and you change the order. Well, changing the order is, is not a problem if things were invalid before they will be invalid afterwards, and if they were valid before they will be valid afterwards. Uh, but if things were invalid before, they may be valid afterwards. Yes. My question is, um, is this a formulation problem we are having now, or is it even deeper than that? So, are we disagreeing on the content? Because I'm not sure at this point. I thought we had some agreement at ITF 106. Um, yeah, and that, that was refined in the mailing list discussion we had afterwards. I can't remember exactly what was said in IETF 106, but I, uh, in, in general, agree uh, with the content here. Okay. With, with, with the, the uh, some of the improvements we're discussing here, uh, like that um, are mostly um yeah most um, most mostly aligned up here okay i'm i'm basically happy with what is here good i mean I, this lines up with the the comments m many of the comments i've made on the list too mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the other another thing maybe that might be helpful to add here is this is um, I don't know you know whether there's a pro, whether protocols a protocol design something about protocol design um, you design a protocol to tolerate uh, uh, duplicates or not. That's there not is, here. There is no way in Seaboard to really tolerate them. I'm, I'm not sure how, how that would work. By the way, I just pushed a version with Jim's text and a few more changes from the discussion. So, a, a protocol that um, 
you know, every map entry is a uh, addition or deduction to your bank account is would not tolerate duplicates. Um, a protocol to report the current uh, air temperature uh, probably would would tolerate duplicates. But such a protocol would give half the people the wrong answer with duplicates. The temp in the temperature one. Yeah, I mean, if the temperature had different values, then half the people get the wrong answer. Yeah, maybe depending on what the point of the protocol was and, and how those how those duplicates you know are getting inserted and what I can and, and how reliant I was on getting the right answer for the temperature I'm sorry say that again and how reliant I am on getting the right answer for the temperature if I was going to turn on the air conditioning or turn off the air conditioning based on that we are all of a sudden now in a situation where you may not be tolerant If you have an application which is tolerant, then you're going to want to be in the second bucket because you're going to want to know all of them. Yeah, that's why I didn't even address that because I'm I'm not sure what kinds of tolerant we actually would have, and I I wouldn't want to design a protocol in in such a way that there's elaborate mechanisms to cope with something that, that is invalid in the first place. So generic decoders that are not in class one or, or class two, or the, the first two bullet points have really limited applicability. Yes. Yeah, no men in the middle. And I didn't put in the term men in the middle because attacker, I think, is, is uh, good enough. Oh, I don't know. Um, it has to say, um, I, I, I think it has to say, is not possible if the transport or the encoder is under control of the attacker. It's the transport that we really care about here. Um, the, 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 how, the, most likely, the encoder is going to be okay, and the the you know, the, the sender originator of the seaboard is going to be okay. I think it's, it's the, it's the man in the middle. In my cases, I'm more worried about the originator than the man in the middle. Um, but to me, the encoder kind of implies the man in the middle case It's whoever did the last encoding.
Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, so the, the third to last line already talks about data source and transfer, and maybe the second to last line uh, should just say data instead of encoder. That's better. Encoding might also work. Yeah, that, that no, I don't like that. Narrower than than desired. Okay, so uh, my plan would be to uh, wait a little bit uh, uh, until we we have uh, more. More, uh, thought a little bit more about this and and have uh, reviews, and uh, then to to ask Paul to merge this. And we also have another uh, pull request. Uh, number one sixty five that that has been. Um, around for a while and I think I managed to put in the issues from uh, number 160, from issue number 160 in there as well, using some of the text that, that Peter Oxel had uh, proposed or had written. Um, so th that's maybe one, one other thing that I would like people to look at. And then we could merge those uh, two pull requests and, and are essentially stuck with the clerical pull requests like uh, uh, checking MIME registrations and checking the list of changes uh, and so on. And when that is done, uh, we can put out the next version and do a working class call, I think. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, no, no, no answer from Jeffrey. Or... Well, <laughs> he had forty-five minutes before this meeting, so. No, no, but I mean, um, I thought about the. Uh, um, before the last changes, you had already requested. So the, the situation is that, that those points were kind of peripheral to mm. his points. So maybe he simply doesn't have that much of an opinion okay. about them. So I, I don't blame him. him. No, I kind of remember you uh, last interim. You said that you had reached out to him. That's why I was um, wondering. Okay. Well, I hope he will respond to the ring of last call. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be waiting for the next update then. I think the discussion was useful for progressing the, or for improving the text. Yes. Um, I don't know if there is anything else, any other comments that uh, people who are here here think that should be solved before working group plus call. If there is, please do raise an issue in GitHub.
Okay. Um, anything else? Let me just go through the points from last meeting. Uh, still waiting, waiting on Jeffrey's approval. And this is done. Floating point related. So that's good. Uh, request for map validity. Okay. Lawrence to check PR 159 and notify Carson and mailing list. Uh, what's 159? Yeah, I, I haven't done it yet, but I will I keep promising. Okay. <laughs> Okay, if I keep it uh, in the minute, so we remember. Sure. Um, oh, hi, Michael. Hi, I joined about three minutes ago, so I have no idea what you're doing. Um, I think we are wrapping up. I know, figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the, the main discussion point was about uh, the, the, this uh, hard issue of map uh, key uniqueness. And th there is new oh. text in the pull request that everybody is asked to look at. I posted the link to the minutes. Um, working group, let's call after next submission. All right. MD. Are we using HackMD instead of Etherpad? Wonderful. Well, the Etherpad is having problems. Oh, okay. Anyway, HackMD is cool. Uh, My students have essentially pushed me into HackMD using HackMD exclusively. So it's really great. Uh, and reach out to implementers. Okay, that was a new issue, 167, which is sixty-seven was closed. Yeah, I think okay, the default encoding. Tag or untag. I think that that's now in one sixty eight. Well, that's close too. Who closed that? Mm. Um, I read the text in the pull request think and I think I'm okay with it mm -hmm. um, I said at the last ITF that I thought we should have gone a specific way but I was in the rough so that's okay Thanks. um Yeah, and we got new new issue 170. Let's take a look at 167 and 170. Please consider allowing Seaborn null as a valid contact tag content for tag number zero and one. What's our tag number zero and one? They're different ways of specifying dates and times. I don't know why they just don't want to put a null instead of the tag value. Because this would basically say you want to do it. You always want to have null as an option on a tag. What happens if I don't have that mime value there? Well, I have the tag there and then null, right? Wait a 
database is like it when they can specify null instead of another value. What does it mean? However, it still fails to satisfy the protocol requirements for always encoding tag number zero and one, which could lead to compatibility problems. What does that mean? Well, that's, you can create problems <clears throat> by making requirements in your protocol that, that then turn out to be bad. Uh, and uh, one such requirement may be to always have a tag number one uh, somewhere. And then if it turns out you have to be able to, to encode undefined values, then you cannot fulfill this protocol requirement to always have a tag number one, unless we change tag number one. And I don't think we want to do this at this point. Oh. So my, my solution would be to fix the protocol. The protocol meaning the user of Seabor. No, the, the, the text that says there must be a tag number one there. Which is the user of Seabor. Yes. Which is one of the users, but not the one that- so, the Some user says there must be a, a time and zero or one in, in my thing somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, and they can't accept the, the, that if there is no time that there should be no tag and therefore uh, they want to put an initial uh, in a null instead. So this is well known from certificates which have exactly the same problem. In certificates you must have uh, expiry times. Right. The convention is to put in an expiry time in 9,999 in the year. To mean infinite or not specified, right. <clears throat> well, the, the problem in certificates, you know where the field is. You don't rely on the, the data type to, to know which data item is which. So certificates just don't have the, don't have the ability to put null in. Um, but this, this problem is different. This is where you're relying on the type of the uh, field to figure out which field is which. It's some sort of an Im implicit thing, like typing. So, so I, I think there is definitely something that you can't do in Seabor here, uh, yeah. because because uh, null and undefined are excluded from tags zero and one. I don't know that this is a critical thing to be able to do in Seabor. You might be able to work around it. Maybe your protocol is a little bit bigger uh, because of that. Um, but it does seem like there's something you can't do because of this. And, and but if, well, I mean, a CRLs, the expiry time is an optional field. You don't, it's, I don't see any problems with making it an optional. You know that in the tag, what it's supposed to be. So, yeah. So in, in, in the certificate issue, the issue is that the expires on was a mandatory field. And so we had to put a stupid value in. If, if it had been an optional field, then that could be okay. Um, so let's say someone had a map and they had expires on. Could they not, instead of having a zero or one with a, a null value, couldn't they put a null, just a CBOR null in? So it's not tag zero or one, it's just a null? I think that'll work for, for lots of protocols, but I think there are, there are some protocols where it might not work. I, I agree, there's some protocols that might not work. Do we have exemplars right now? In other words, are there people we can't fix except by doing this? I bet not. There's probably a fix other than this. I, I'm gonna have to sit and come up with the examples, but um, I mean, this would be an incompatible change to type zero and one, wouldn't it? So who is, who is the requester? It's Montgomery Edwards. 
Yes. <laughs> Superset four four eight. His login is X four four eight. Because it's it's definitely a, a, a pseudonym. Yes. Um, and one wonders if he's dealing with a certificate issue itself. <laughs> um, Yeah, so I think I will I will uh, write a response um, to this uh, issue, and and the thing we need to decide is whether we we add some explanatory text to the definitions of tags zero and one, but I don't think that we actually want to change the definition of tag number zero and one to allow. We have other tags like 1001 that, that would allow that. I mean, this would be true for like every tag, right? Yes. At least many of them. Okay, Mike just commented. Yes. I'll send a comment too. What was the other um, issue that you wanted us to look at? So the one that we had last meeting was 167, which uh, Montgomery Edwards closed, I guess, because. Um, well, it's exactly the same issue. Yeah. So he just opened a, a new proposal. Um, and the other one. OK, yeah. 168 was closed because 167 or yeah, basically also related. Mm -hmm. No, what uh, Karsten was asking people to look at was the PR 165, right, Karsten? Yes. Yeah. Which is the other open <clears throat> request. Yeah, and it, it's pretty simple. So I, I hope that that we can reach agreement on that quickly. I used yes. a C compiler in the 1980s that didn't have a floating point. And after all those years, I find I almost never, almost never use floating point. It's like I'm a can't. <laughs> I'm like, wow, we have floating point numbers now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remind myself that they're not new. Okay. That's pretty much the decision between using a Cortex M3 or a Cortex M4. That's 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 the hardware, but the, the compiler can add floating point support in or not. I know uh, one of the issues that I mean, when I was at Qualcomm, one of the in the TEE, there was no floating point just because no one had got around to hooking up the compiler and the libraries to support it. It just wasn't a priority um, until things like fingerprints came along. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think that that's one of the reasons why uh, CBIS is a little bit more careful about throwing all kinds of numbers into the same bucket. And it's, it's uh, maintaining a clear distinction between integers and floats. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Okay. There is nothing else. I think we're done. Yeah, we could mention for those who have noticed that we have a new RFC. Yes, right. And there is another <laughs> one that is uh, just uh, reaching off 48 done. Yes. So 87.42 Seabor sequences. Yes. The new one. So good job. Very, very quickly and smoothly done. And now we're waiting for Seabor array. Yes. So I gave my OK that it's not yet recorded in the Auth48 page, uh, but probably just because people haven't Very soon, yes. woken up yet. I'm going to stop the uh, recording now. Yes. And